To the Geek on My Sleeve channel. This is Geek Out 102 over Savage Dominion by Luke Chimilenko and JD Penman, narrated by Luke Daniels. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. It uh, definitely has a Luke Chimilenko vibe or feel. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, for those new to the channel, uh, Luke Chimilenko is an instant buy for us. Um, this one kind of snuck up on us. Um, unfortunately, it fell into the category of having to wait for the audio version to come out a little bit after the release of the uh, ebook and paperback. Um, as always, Luke Daniels, the narrator, does a phenomenal job. Really just a, a whole cast upon himself. He also does the um, Ascend Online series, right? Yep. How we kind of got into uh, Luke Chimilenko and all his epicness. Um, and yeah, before we get too far into it... Um, Appreciate those of you who were able to adjust to the time change. Uh, we figured that, uh, you know, tomorrow being the holidays, everybody would have crazy schedules. So instead of canceling on you guys, we bumped it up a day. And um, yeah, as always, appreciate you guys um, contributing uh, live chat and comments below. Um this uh this book was a little bit of a different take on lit rpg for me it kind of had more of that uh D, D tabletop feel than the uh a sekai trapped in another world video game feel how about with you pete mm, i don't know i i felt like it was right up the alley of trapped in another world or another game kind of deal. Um, okay. Because, I mean, that's kind of what happens. You know, he, he dies and he's, you know, taken that, to another world, given a new body. Yeah. I, I've listened to this book a couple times, but I only got through it once um, this last week. So bear with me a bit if I'm off on uh, the details. But the intro was just, hilarious right like they're going he's he's on this date played up the fact that he was um going to like he he enjoyed hiking or whatnot and um yeah like he's huffing and puffing nearly killing himself and then he pretty much defends his date against a wolf yep yeah and ends up dying and you run into yeah worst tinder date ever <laughs> i uh he got a couple achievements unlocked in that opening scene and then yeah. um supposedly the qualifier for him with the grim reaper which was just kind of a fun little uh interaction was that what was it he basically died on hollow ground he died on, on hollow ground or something with, like that under the light of the moon because it's a celestial and the solar or mm -hmm. solar and lunar um sides and he was also marked by a beast so yeah, yeah. but I, the, uh, this book a lot of the i guess setup or build up reminds me of god's eye because yes. you're brought to another world, you have a god or a patron who is rooting for you but can't really mm -hmm. interact. You kind of meet them off the get go. Um, mm -hmm. They, you know, try to do stuff to help you the best they can, and mm -hmm. then if you die, you just come back in a random spot. But you can also create something that will allow you to come back to your area um, but that's probably about where the uh, similarities end in the god's eye it's more of a battle royale style where everybody starts at the same time where for this yeah. one we know the eternals or the gods have essentially they just keep throwing eternals down whenever they get them uh so to speak mm -hmm. it's kind of like their their playground right um, and I wanted to look it up, the name of the world. Um, it's uh, the cat from Ascend Online. Yes. Is, uh, oh, my God. I knew where it was, but I can't. 
Uh, Amaranth. There you go. There you go. See, everybody, we can remember names sometimes. Now, what I wanted to look up <laughs> was when in Ascend Online, as he's naming Amaranth, Amaranth, he says a descriptor with it. So I wanted to go back and grab that, but I didn't. Anyway, this uh, fantasy sci fi lit RPG books are making us learn things about, you know, mythology and all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, it, I, I really enjoyed it, especially, um, like you said, Luke Chimilenko kind of has a humor about him. I was where... going to say that's one of his strong suits. I really enjoy his uh, party interactions. Mm -hmm. or the team dynamics so to speak and, yeah and even all the way back to um like when he was selecting his class and race and everything right like they're going through all the quote-unquote good um races you could pick and he's kind of just over there ADDing or whatever and he's like oh man no it's like oh great like so i don't have to deal with this god or whatever um and he picks Oh, his name's Mulkin, but what's the name of his race? Shagnar Fawn. Oh, look at you. And he's pretty much like a giant goat man or something like that with like horns and constantly mm. like scraping his horns on the roof and um, yeah, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh was mildly creeped out that the spider goddess seemed flirty. I, I don't know. It, it kind of fits with like luring them into your web mm, and the, the whole, you know, I guess I think of, uh, oh, I, I let's think make it, babies and I yeah. will now eat you so that <laughs> you can be the food for my yeah, children to spawn spiders. out of you so i, I that. guess but i i will also say in our lit rpg journey uh we're so far we're missing the wise old guy we got the gruesome death and we got we, the spider we had the, um was it the priest or whatnot yeah, the, the white beginning? prophet at the beginning the white prophet yeah yeah he but he only said one profound thing trope. where it's like don't trust anybody so it didn't really oh. qualify for me I don't know. He supposedly set them all down this path um, from the get go, right? Like there's some back and forth with our lizard brother. Yeah, there was the lying prophet, says uh, Toradan. Um, so we got we got our old guy trope. Oh, okay. The, okay. The I guess he has qualifies then. Yeah. So it it was fun. Like it played out the tropes but it wasn't too cringy for me right like yes we had our our spiders yes we had you know our wise old guy um but then the like you said the party banter you just know these guys do um, a lot of mmos right just that natural um back and forth and then mulkin with his uh video game logic right yeah time and time again yeah yeah um it, it yeah the dialogue was a lot of fun um go ahead all right so i all in all i guess for the lit rpg trope thing you start off with nothing and by the end of it you're building a town so i enjoyed that as well as it was a lot of combat a lot of uh yeah like the whole time you literally start off on a hike get attacked by a wolf then you get brought in to you know you die you get brought to the character oh God selection area screen. and then yeah. as soon as you're born you die again and then we get a, a little bit of a descriptor just to get our quest just to go on a dungeon run we did get our dungeon run like it's yeah you could almost build a checklist off this um Torden, really appreciate the uh the commentary uh Torden says it is fairly unique that he picked a an evil race 
there's only one other series I can think of with a evil protagonist. So we so, found a few. Peter, go ahead and do your recommendations on evil protagonist. Oh, I was going in a different direction. You can have evil protagonist. Well, um, Dungeon Lord is one that I really enjoy, right? He's quote unquote yeah, okay. Edwin, evil. Um, gosh, I felt like there was a handful more, but now I'm just drawing sure a blank on it. Um, I would argue that he who fights with monster, Jason, could be kind of evil. Anyway, um, my I guess my comment for here? that was is it really evil? And that's something that I kind of struggled with for the dichotomy of figuring out this book because it's the victor who writes history. And as we're meeting the solar or sun, which is often referred to as a good side, is going through everything. Mm -hmm. And then we meet with the lunar or the moon side of things. They say everything you were told is a lie. Mm -hmm. And we have the, oh, de Bergar or the dwarf, not dwarf people who essentially because they stuck with their god, so to speak, but he lost. They were then cursed. But then you have the Svart Alvarin. I uh, probably butchered that. Who essentially changed their makeup into something else. In my mind. So that they wouldn't be cursed. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I struggled getting it all straight between the different people and i took it as void being a power set versus you know evil yeah yeah i appreciate the fact that they included those details into the book it's definitely something that i would want to get on the kindle and go back and reference and kind of read through the different races and that's um and taking the time to kind of explain the magic about why he was eligible for the character creation screen and to become an eternal. But again, like you're talking about the, the good versus evil Mulkin is supposedly the opposite faction, which is why um, I, the, the scene was so short. I don't even remember what faction the one girl was, or but it she was like the took it to heart. or whatever the race that was supposed to be gone from the world. But mm. then we end up bringing them back. And then yeah, she's the same too. as the last I one that joins our party. Up. At yeah. least that's what I thought it was. But yeah, I'm... So, sorry. Uh, Torridan was talking about how they have read the second book and then commented when I followed up about how the second book was. Uh, Torian says, I think it's better than the first, not fantastic, but it's a fun read. So as much as I enjoyed this book, and again, like Luke Chimilenko was an instant buy. Overall, um, how did it like rate for you, Peter, compared to some of your other favorites? So I would still Ascend put Online. Ascend Online higher. Um, Ascend Online probably fits in my top five for lit RPGs. Um, for this one, it's book one, so I'll give it some leeway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I He wins out with the constant combat and the unique you do character love your archetypes because it's not as traditional. Mm-hmm. You know, like being able, I really enjoyed the mechanic of shaping the weapon or the sword into the shield. And I'm sure he'll expand upon that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the mage being able to heal. And then the archer's the only one that really didn't wow me. She's just there for the banter. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. And it definitely scratched my lit RPG itch and um, was a lot of fun. But it's good to know that the series warms up. It, it feels more kind of like, oh, I always get it mixed up with Stormlight. Um, a Mark of Kings 
like it's it the progression it kind of like eases us into it more in a traditional yeah, epic playing fantasy. for the long game mm-hmm. where again ascend a lot of fun one of the things i enjoy about lit rpg series is like i feel like they're just faster paced right you just the progression um moves so much quicker where i feel like we we had a good amount of progression in the story but it felt more like a pacing of a uh epic fantasy where hey like here's the world building here's the build up you know like here's all this cool stuff and learn about the the factions and the gods and um all that good stuff um i'm sorry did you say combat wise was it enough did it uh it was primarily a lot of combat though yet again like it it didn't quite feel as great as like ascend four for example well ascend four is just that book number four the build up into everything right and that's um, why like it's we're not now at like full book army one. yeah combat right awaken um, online is uh on our list we i think we have several already without yeah. going through it but it's been recommended enough so Torden said awaken online that's the other evil protagonist series i was thinking of the names blur together they really do or would we, you I... consider Viridian gate online to be <laughs> technically it, he... that's true gosh we could just do a whole freaking well um, and video the on this like what it what does it mean to be the evil faction right line up for me is brandon sanderson and Mistborn because what is evil evil is a guy born in a different area who has his own things that he wants to accomplish but you guys want different things due to your current situation hey uh I think we should commit to working Awaken Online into the rotation. Yeah, We've just yeah, heard so been, much about it. And, definitely um, uh, highly recommended. We, we can make that our uh, question of the day for the comments below. Can we even consider ourselves lit RPG enthusiasts if we have not done Awaken Online? We've probably, gosh, I'm, now I'm tempted to count if you include the different books in the series, we're probably a hundred plus lit RPG books in and have still not done Awaken Online. Um yeah. We'll 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 get right on that, uh Torridan. Um so I I just enjoy the progression. It was fairly, I guess, simplistic as a whole, but mm -hmm. it worked with the limited information we had hey here's a profit here's the quest find the stuff and then it leads to hey let's go up a hill or you know dungeon crawl hey let's go up a hill mm -hmm. oh well you know righteous i can't die so i'm gonna save them anyway which gets our foot in the door for the next little leap which is how uh you know they Pretty much said that the uh the dwarves were evil because they delved too deep and then kind of the same thing with the shagnar fawn or however you pronounce it for them being the original people who landed there and that they're all you know fight and whatnot um anyway so we get in good with them and then we get the other epic dungeon crawl into he was another eternal right like you're talking about the the mage tower wait no uh, we haven't made it there yet oh okay or sorry for um the dwarfs not dwarfs when we go and we got the dungeon crawl and we pull out the piece of the sword and then we end up uh, bringing the other race. When I say it starts with an A. So Dwarvgar is it's spelled uh, 
D V E R G A R, the ones that the bodies were hardening to stone, right? Are dwarves not dwarves? Okay. And then the, oh, I want to say avian, but that's not right. Or Alberin. Alberin. Yeah. Yeah, they come back. Um, uh, I guess between what you that think about him had... befriending and eventually like having a relationship with uh, his Stockholm syndrome. We fight for you now. Uh, I think it was one of those forwardly backwards, bringing it full circle, the worst Tinder date ever to <laughs> um, start off with an awful date that you end up dying on to um, romantic entanglements with, yeah, as a uh, previous fart. Yeah, Sounds like I... Fart. So there was a lot that was going on right <laughs> towards the end there that I have so many questions about when he finally binds the piece of the sacred blade and now mm -hmm. he's getting communication with the void god who was supposedly slain who pulled some double magic evil. stuff to end up being able to communicate through the shard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or right, so another thing that is interesting. Five is the number of Eternals that we start out with. Typical party and size. We end up having one who is just traumatized and ends up dying off. And then you get the other mm -hmm. one who's just, you know, how can you be racist when you didn't even know these races existed? Right. And then those two spawn somewhere else. OK. So now mm -hmm. we have three in our main group. When we get mm -hmm. to the end, to the wizard, I was expecting that to be our fourth, mm -hmm. but we end up killing him. With the other side, they had the two, and then I assume that they line up or start working out with the race of, oh, our, oh, Alvarin. Or whatever, I figure they're gonna go and align with that, or if they're gonna go help out the uh, void worm person. So, anyway, I guess I was trying to get to I think they're gonna balance out with their uh, can't die beepity beep. Um, I just said it, I can't think of words. You're not making noise if you're trying. My bad. Um, what was the question? Answer is fart? No, answer is Eternals. Eternals? Yeah. yeah. Um, we get down to the Holy Trinity of a three-party, right? Tank, um, healer. You said we start off with a five-party. Uh, but we don't. Because mm. our tank is also our healer and our dps is also our healer i guess this which, is true. which is one of the things that i enjoyed because the uh, the heavy hitting front end is also mm -hmm. the defense where he's got the shield yeah and then it, yeah it was i enjoyed the varying abilities it's fun i it, leaves a lot of potential for the combat to get interesting later as they continue to get these power-ups um his weapon smithing on the fly ability is uh pretty funny well, that's where i was like uh, so maybe he just didn't think about it but after we kill the mage and he's like literally rooting around inside his organs trying to find his stomach to find the shard didn't make mm -hmm. sense because when he gets the first part of the blade, he senses it with his power and he pulls it to him and it's malleable. Um, okay. So I guess that's another part that hasn't quite, you know, 
been driven home or just been overlooked for me because with his sword yeah i get it it's a sword it's designed to be thrown away you know whatever i can get more and get different stuff but mm -hmm. with the you know pieces of the sacred blade why couldn't if he can manipulate it why is he not implementing it into his sword that he currently has and i foresee it, it's he's the main Some character potential there we get yeah. it but that's how this is all going to happen and come down to it he's going to be the only one who can rebond it or well, awaken he, it he is the one that started to soul bind different things to him and um yeah as far as first books go it did a good job kind of laying down the groundwork and the different subplots there yeah yeah, 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 we have our main Eternals. We have, we're doing this for the gods, but right. what do they want anyway? Uh, we've got races that were destroyed that are coming back. We've got other races that had, oh, been punished by the gods. But now I think they're going to be able to get away from the punishment. But I'm not 100%. Because some of the dwarven can were turning into stone where we found mm -hmm. them, but our caravan mm -hmm. that was coming over didn't have any of those problems. And as of now, we have a amalgamation of both groups. Um, I thought some of the caravan people did have some. They didn't have any, no minor, like, turning to stone, because it's a slow process, right, as they get uh, older? They may have, because they also, when she first reveals it, she says, you don't need to flinch away, because only Devergar can catch it. Right, right. And then, which leads me to, with the Alvarin, they got turned into the Schwart or whatever, but what is their punishment that was leveled or levied against them? Because those were the two that one of them bailed from the god situation, and the other one, you know, doubled down and was dedicated. Torden said the whole dwarf elders are just talking statues was interesting. And I yeah. thought that was kind of a cool, cool concept too. Um, was some perceive as a blessing or a curse could also be a blessing, right? Like, yeah, their elders turned to stone, but in a way, a um, bunch of old dudes not going anywhere. Ask some questions create the plan, execute the plan. I really enjoyed the uh, scene where they took back part of the territory, right? Like after going to the elders and having that exchange and um, basically leading the charge up there to recapture, oh, what was it? Like some That's sort of so agriculture. Warm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was a good one. And then the uh, drunk shopping. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that's something I can appreciate. I was reading through uh, some of the comments on Goodreads, and a lot of people disliked the book because they felt like the main character was an idiot. And for me, um, I can see the frustration there, but at the same time, I get annoyed mm. when the main character is like overly perfect and thinks of everything in the moment where um, i would say method to the madness granted it okay. is you know written out but uh, literally everything that he was picking up was for a specific reason they get dropped in the very first dungeon he's trying to get him out so due to his environment and what's going on he picked up reshaping Okay, so then that gives him the sense, which it allows him to pull the shard out of the tower, and then we're being ran down, and we know we're going to spawn somewhere else, so we know we need soul bond, and then same thing, you know, bleed now, we need it's the healing. A, uh, plot device, so when he gets drunk and buys a bunch of stuff, it allows them to do cool things later. Well, I mean, that was still fits into the method of the madness of... He says it at the beginning. Um, 
oh, it's when he's talking about dungeons. I will believe that there's not going to be monsters to fight after going through three complete installments of dungeons or whatever. And it, it fits with the theme of the lit RPG and the video game logic for, hey, why would you put monsters in the way if it wasn't the way we were supposed to go? And yeah, so on and so forth. Yeah. And eventually, Peter is going to do the series about how video games set him up for success. And here we are yep. listening to audiobooks about other people living their dreams in video games. And uh, yeah, good times. Good times. Also, real quick, shameless plug. Uh, Peter has been killing it on tiktok and the shorts lately you guys should check them out we're always talking about our favorite quotes that we enjoy and uh finally broke down star tiktok i don't even know if we have we need to get those links in uh in our descriptions and stuff so you can find it but we're also throwing them up in the shorts so yeah lots of good stuff i don't think we have any from this book yet do we? No, I haven't pulled any. Stay tuned, guys. Uh, so the ones up. I'm tempted to pull from this are all like. So I can understand the comment that people feel the main character is stupid, but that's literally the part of the dichotomy between yeah. the elf or not elf, the human and our main guy. And it and, and, and let's be it honest, serves like people are stupid right so it's a little bit trying when we read a book where the character is the white knight prince charming can do no wrong doesn't have a crooked tooth in his mouth and like always thinks of everything in the moment um a lot of these scenes like combat one after another adrenaline rush getting drunk doing drunk shopping, um, saying things where you put your your foot in your mouth or your horn in your, I don't know, ceiling or whatever. Um, especially for those gamers out there, how many times have they just, you're in a party, things getting real, people aren't following like the two basic rules where, you know, don't step in the stuff and, um, don't pull aggro from the tank and gosh, like chat can just devolve in the moment where, you know, you just hear your mom, your face, you know, and we get to see that a bit with the, like you said, our archer and the main character and interesting side note. I appreciate the fact that they all weren't from earth right? Like those two were, so they were able to share some of the inside jokes um, and colloquialisms. And then our uh, lizard buddy, Asher, Azer, yeah. um, he seems to be from a different world. And it's kind of interesting watching those interactions, right? Um, especially when, uh, oh, it was Mulkin um starts to call him babe right and he responds to it well um, um, yeah i enjoy just writes the, it off as one of his other peculiar peculiarities the party dynamics as a whole mm -hmm. and like nobody's perfect and he does apologies pretty well in this too because kind of like when he goes and he's trying to save the Devergar and he's like well i can come back if i die and then you know eventually they apologize that one was pretty good and then you know between the Oliver and and whatnot yeah yeah um so Torden chimed in I'd rather a character that's explicitly dumb and acts it than a supposed genius genius who acts like a moron which I am a hundred percent on board with and can appreciate yeah, um, it's definitely not a book for everybody, and I wouldn't recommend it to some select people. But uh, for the most part, I it's 
Yeah, right, it's so, right up my it's, alley. I enjoyed it. It's well written. It allows for some humor to get introduced to the story. And um, yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why Luke Chimilenko's an instant buy for us. And I looked up the other author stuff, uh, GD Penman, and that's how we ended up finding. Gosh, I'm really testing myself on names here. Um, Luke Chimilenko and. Oh, Bryce O'Connor. Bryce O'Connor. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, and Mark of Kings. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's I, nice to see more of these collaborations. I, I mean, like, I, I could put you up on your soapbox about um, the VGO and the Divine Dungeon and, like, all these other massive collaborations of other authors and everything. Um, there's just too many good books to read now. Sidestep... Luke, if you could go back and take like a sharp 90 degree turn on the Ascend online, you implement some station of a god and, you know, creation you and destruction. Seen a whole lot. Yeah. Since and the then, books. as well as the, I want to say, the very first death of our main character when he's doing the spider bit and he's going back and he sees the giant mass of whatever uh moving bones around and whatnot like you led up for something potentially you know mind-blowing later hmm. and then two happen different cast okay and then you know three happened absolutely epic awesome enjoyed it and then you if know we, four if we haven't said it already we didn't get quite we like combat oh best best combat ever i have to grab a couple scenes and uh yeah note them for needing you know references for combat um but we don't get more into it so I really hope we continue with it. And that seems where book one ends, um, as well as in Ascend Online, you have a fast travel method that is being discovered, which I can appreciate because this one was a uh, kind of a slog or, you know, grind and, you know, getting there and fast travel wouldn't have made any sense. But now we kind of have an ability of fast travel if we can figure out the magic and we've got to work for it. So, um, yeah, fanboy status. Love Luke's stuff. Torden made a great comment. I remember, I think I got into Ascend Online first and then warned you a bit about book two. But Torden comments, Ascend Online book two is the weakest for me. And for clarification, I think we're we're both referring to 1.5 or hell to pay. Yeah, because it it kind of runs parallel. It, it's a different. It depends on who you ask. Because if you ask Kindle, it's somehow book three. But if you ask the physical copy, it's 1.5. But then you ask order. chronological, there can be only one. It's two. Um, hell to pay. Hell to pay, uh, I would agree, was probably my weakest as enjoyment. But there were a couple amazing it's, it's nuggets inside of it yeah. where the simple fact of in one, they talk about the blacksmith being mugged. And then in two, we get to see it, which is the start of his journey and just the whole dynamic of con causal connection. And then it was more of a lore aspect as well as it's the other shoe to drop or the other side where you we know that it, there's at least two factions and the elves and whatever and people could have rolled as um, uh, yeah, there it's the people who got taken into the other realm or when they died, they didn't respawn in the correct location. It's leading up to potential of so much more. Um, anyway, 
uh, back to. So I want to wrap it up. Um, Hell to pay. It does a lot of good lore building for me. Um, it it was hard to do it. I think I and commented in the sections that I started Hell to Pay, then went to book three, and you get to meet everybody who was in book two and book three. So there's kind of some pieces you miss out on, but going back through it, there's a lot more of like the larger world letting us know like, hey, here's something on a grander scale going on with the kingdom, not your little, I showed up as a nudist, um, backwood village, now you're running the show, right? Yeah, it, it was definitely for additional lore. My, yeah, I, my problem was I fell in such love with the main characters or the main cast Same. that I was like, what? Same. Anyway, anyway, so yes, I which, agree. Which stream are we covering? So uh, Savage back Dominion, to a Savage lit Dominion. RPG adventure by Luke Chimalenko, one of the more compl complex names that we actually do know how to pronunciate, thanks to Audible. Um, yeah. And GD Penman, number one in international multi-genre bestseller, number one in U.S. Game tie-in action adventure military and more. One in UK superhero super fantasy ebooks. Number one in Canada superhero fantasy ebooks. Number one in Australia superhero fiction epic fantasy. Yeah. Wow. I I, I think we're not the only ones that are instant buys no matter what luke chimilenko and potentially gd penman put out um but if yeah. you started Luke, Luke's here been kind of go all over check the place, out so, ascend too. online he's he has a number of series going um and i will say this like a lot of these more modern authors that like were able to cover all their content uh during the streams publish a lot like i know you wish he would just write a send online well all day, i can all i can time. understand why because you can kind of see storm like... weaver is a lot of fun a mark of kings is building up uh to be pretty epic um yeah i because like Connor i could stuff. see it with ascend online where book three was really where the like solid ending you know a slight direction for a beginning but yeah that was kind of like it seemed as the core idea of his series mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah like if he's not feeling it don't write it but uh I, he's he's not going anywhere i'll i'll be here um, Luck, luckily, all these guys are young, so many more years, hopefully, of awesome epicness. We have the audible credits to burn. Yes, please. Thank you. So one random negative or thing that I noticed that probably is going to be referenced or dealt with later is mm -hmm. our archer died scuba diving. And we had that whole, you know what your problem is? You haven't hit anything in a while, get attacked by the sea monster. So I guess it makes sense why she didn't explore the ocean or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I expected her to get a little cameo of, uh, you know, some water action or whatnot. Yeah. yeah. She still has a chance to, but uh Yeah. Yeah, we've essentially got our own little island where we need to figure out how to defeat all of the uh, booby traps, such as the random feast in the mess hall. Mm -hmm. Or wait, no, that was back at the tower. Yeah. Or, or the, before we went across the ocean, so we don't have to do that. But Progression I'm sure... was done really well. I mean, we literally start out life 2.0 in the ground getting dug out right mm -hmm. and 
it wasn't all easy but we we went from dungeon crawl to dungeon crawl to saving our caravan to the city slash factions problems is our problems now introduce some crazy higher scale level magic eternal epicness and um tinder game 2.0 is going better um we have all these awesome epic powers and uh yeah on our way to getting our legendary sword to conquer i don't know well what, so that's the assignment again or uh, i'm sorry what's the assignment we're supposed to collect all the parts of the sword oh the weapon I think it's just sacred shards okay in which that's where things get weird again because you have the initial when they're telling them about the different characters and the courts it uh it kind of makes it seem one way but then we get down there and the prophet says it differently where you know the only one or the only way that they were able to kill the void god was with this but they don't know who it was and he's kind of still there um okay and then the fact that like yeah yeah to re-murder the dead god um mm. where he was gone but he's coming back so the we can sense some magical powers but when we pick up the second shard and bind it to ourselves we realize that he's somehow inside the shard or able to communicate through the shard but then i was also confused because i thought one of the celestial gods was one of the guys who was fighting down below but i probably just completely butchered the name and misreferenced it but then you have the divergar who delved too deep who were supposed to be the bad guys but it was just because they were um you know keeping their promise and they followed through with it but then you have the oh alvarin who were supposed to I don't know. It's 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 a whole bunch of jumbly wumbly timey wimey mess stuff right now. Yeah, that's okay. There's a reason why people keep spreadsheets. Um, I, I, that's where I almost feel as if it's irrelevant because <laughs> our our main guy we have our is gather pretty class. much following the idea of you know be righteous and kind to others and he's doing his own thing like yeah he's there to incite chaos yeah they admit that him being a lunar eternal he's supposed to destroy things but sometimes you need to you know destroy it to build it back stronger kind of philosophy or idea with it so i it's, guess it's a common trope slash concept that we see it right like life is chaos people are chaos um but there's a lot of good that comes out of that chaos right yeah we build it to make it better maybe there's a reason we need to do some drunk shopping with our glory points okay and that brings up another good thing that i forgot about so when he flexes his pillars too hard and they start mm -hmm. to take damage or operate differently um it, yeah it's kind of weird where he yeah he literally destroys things to build build it better using his crafting powers mm -hmm. and yeah yeah there there's a lot a lot of potential there and I'm excited to see how that comes to be. Um, I can't remember the scene. 
he's essentially straining using his god senses and he ends up like breaking or cracking the pillars and it goes dimmer but then same thing when we bind the second piece of the sword and we end up losing the light of them and we become a half and half half lunar half void eternal which is interestingly unique but then all of the gods also mentioned that if you do well you can join us mm. um which leads me on to a whole multiverse theory that i won't be getting into because it'll probably be a sec or a separate um book series that will be related but the idea of they thought they defeated the void god but maybe it was him ascending into godhood we know that we have the mm. solar and the lunar but our main guy malkin is part of the lunar and is now half void which is not our two that we knew of. So what you're saying, saying is with our powers combined. Yeah, that are, you know, a triangle is the strongest shape. And we have yeah. a line or a line segment, not even a full line. Mm, but it's all about your perspective, right? Because if you're looking at it from the side on a 2D, the triangle is a line. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's where the void is. And we just haven't uh, <laughs> gotten a handle on our third person view yet. We got that. We got a. Uh, or, yeah, we have it. Spock, but... Spock, Lizard, um, Human. I love the Snapchat filter. Um, yeah, that other Appreciate one all was this... freaking out a bit. Yeah. It was a little too interactive. Yeah, I I was worried about people who are sensitive to light because it was even getting me like, whoa. Um, don't want to have to have a medical disclaimer at the beginning of the stream. Though I was talking to a couple of our friends on the Discord, and a lot of them just listened to us. We promised the podcast is coming. If you do want to see our face, well, today Peter is a um, goblin. Yeah, yeah. I was going to start talking about another book where one of the main characters gets transformed into a demon. Um, but we're getting close on time, so I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Savage Dominion. Um, we have book two oh. on our Audible um you want to keep going on with the series work it back into our rotation yeah yeah i mean two just came out on the 19th for audible on audible yeah um but the yeah. other big thing is we don't know but assume the oh worm of a million names is actually an eternal which makes sense why he's still mm. around the shag narfan who got lost in translation who was supposed to have a shard who transported it into the death realm or whatever um mm -hmm. assume is some weird way of eternal jazz the human the fact that he's been flaunting it around may or may not be an eternal um we picked up the alverins one because we got them out of that swart life do we know how many potential eternals are here because we're getting no. five we do not know and we, we know, know that, that they supposedly others. can't completely die except for now because we just broke that rule. Um, That's what they're there for, right? 
but we also yeah, know challenge. that the lunar core hadn't had one in a new one in forever and a day um mm -hmm. so but they also kind of emphasize that most eternals kind of set themselves up and rule kingdoms sure why not have a dynasty and a harem and all the glory port points and trunk shopping i want well how do you get glory points if you're sitting on your butt uh I, I i'm living for hundreds of years i mean i'm sure i found some way to exploit the game mechanics or the system whether it be mana generators or um you know companion farming or um you know ascended into deityness um melange have you seen the movie yet i have not oh you gotta watch the movie um I'm supposed to be doing a stream with our good buddy chaz to review the movie pete you got about a week the rest of you guys you got about a week um uh about a week is good. that like a saturday or a sunday i believe it actually is a saturday um i'll pull the time and plug it make sure to check out discord my friends Okay. I hear it and IMAX is incredible, but um, I have been spoiled with COVID and I'm not sure if I want to go out. It's on HBO. It's on HBO if you have a paid prescription or uh, subscription. Max, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who don't know, uh, we're talking about Dune and it's a series carl thoroughly enjoys has been a big emphasis or core structure for a lot of the fantasy realm and all the fantasy writing um yes but they finally came out with the movie which well, a i believe remake. there's a couple uh, yeah, earlier been versions another one yeah um I'm not going to get into the books are better than movies because they are a separate medium. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. From what I've heard, they did good uh, with this version. Yeah, the only reason and they people took a lot of time to make it. Yes. I know of mentioned it. They're like, oh, it's got Jason Momoa. And I was like, okay. Yeah. As Duncan Idaho. Uh, I it was very righteous in the book series. Anyway, anyway, typically listen to the first four books, which book four is my favorite. Um, a lot of people dislike it. God Emperor of Dune. But I every six months go back and re-listen to it. It's good stuff. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of potential coming out of book one of Savage Dominion i yeah so currently we have a lizard wizard we have yes. a human we have the defergar and then we have one of the alvarin or wait lizard shagnar fawn human dwarf alvarin yeah we are so i think we're missing one because i thought there were six shards okay maybe yeah either i can't count or we almost have every potential race i like it and typically the way it works like the scaling progression just continue to pick up momentum it oh, yeah. would be we, interesting we just to landed see how it goes and took over two. the tower have the mm -hmm. potential to build our own town on our secret base that we're going to figure out how to oh, fast travel through of which is going to land our feet in the fire because it was a giant glowy beam and the other side hasn't been maintained dungeon run just kidding we don't have enough power on our side to go back uh yeah epic battle fight scene no you clue know, sounds good to me though in in the not so distant future there'll be mmo players like ourselves sitting around and talking about how 
back in my day, we actually had to manually run between towns until you unlocked your flight path instead of just this whole like instant travel notion, auto run. We did have under auto run, numlock, but it was straight. Yeah. Um, and you also had follow command. Yes. Which was buggy as all hell and uh, yeah, occasionally worked me latency and uh, nope, you weren't following anymore. Mm, yeah. Oh, could totally go down the rabbit hole. Um, one of the reasons why I get excited about lit RPG is just how far technology has come with the virtual reality. Um, we're not quite at dive capsules yet, but yeah. Good I blame times. the matrix. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, I, I get it. That's the easiest way for anything to pop off to be like, oh, no, aliens attack. Ah, we're all going to die. And people get sucked into it. But uh, yeah, you could have painted us in a better light. All we got out of that was red pill or blue pill. Yes. Which we also haven't figured out yet. But besides the point. Uh, oh. We do like to go down the rabbit hole. It's about that time. Um, oh, Torden commented, follow command, do not use around lava, water, cliffs, or other dangerous areas because you will fall into them. Literal disclaimer from a game I play. Yes. Yep. We, we all had that friend that no matter what managed to fall off a cliff or um, take half the raid down the wrong tunnel to under city. And because everybody wants to hang with the dude with fast travel, we're going to just like launch out of a, um, yeah, fall damage, not, not the greatest. Uh, carry on, we're, we're approaching about that hour mark. Um, Appreciate you guys hanging with us. Hope everyone has a safe and awesome holiday. Happy Halloween. And more importantly, our father's birthday. Peter, make sure to text dad tomorrow. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, so that... Pretty much close it up for Savage Dominion. We'll be continuing the series. Definitely a huge Luke Chimalenko fan. He has started several series and uh, seems like he's just going to continue to tease me with all of them. All worth <clears> checking <throat> out. And uh, we've covered yeah. a lot of it. All if you want some spoiler free reviews, checking out, but all kind of for different reasons. Like. Ascend Online is pretty traditional, you know, very, could be very close future, MMO style, beautifully done. Um, A Mark of Kings is more like fantasy, more hardcore fantasy, more D&D-esque for, you know, use on abilities, but, or I would... I, sorry, more epic fantasy where it's definitely the long game, um, traditional fantasy races. And then Iron Prince kind of gives you like a My Hero Academia feel, um, but also behind the scenes, we haven't gotten there yet, where we're going up against a super powered army of AIs and the only way to get funding is to do giant Thunderdome battle style stuff. So that's exciting. And then it Savage Dominion for currently it's the the combat, the how it's uh, for me it, it, it feels more like traditional fantasy um, D and D style. Um, sorry, you were saying. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. More... Nah, it could be building up to an epic fantasy stuff, but not quite as much. Okay. Anyway, and then next week, we have book four in the Life in Exile, which is Watcher's Repose um, by Sean Oswald. Really enjoy the series as a whole so far. It, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it follows more so the children, um, for this one. I like so, it a lot. what is unique about this series, it's still a lit RPG, but it follows a whole family where, you know, most lit RPGs, actually, this is the only one that follows a whole family that I know of. It's one individual who has a lot of gaming experience who is loving the fact that he's sucked into a video game world. This one is different because it takes the whole family. The whole family's in a car, driving down the road, you know, typical family shenanigans and giant portal, and they're all transported and compensated for what got converted. Uh, yeah, but it adds a very unique dynamic in the sense that what our previous knowledge or our perceived knowledge ends up hindering our, you know, MMO or our game expert and ends up benefiting the others that aren't as invested or knowledgeable in select ways. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun because of the whole family. I truly enjoy the character dynamics. It's not, I guess, so traditional where one of ours not to you know dive too deep is uh essentially a magical tank which is kind of not what you would think which is exciting and then yeah so unique abilities character dynamics it's building up to something more and epic where we have the uh oh kind of town building that's leading into more anyway i yeah, yeah i highly recommend building. the series yeah well said well said and keeping it relatively spoiler free so props it's a great series and it does a good job covering multiple viewpoints and i'm excited in book four we're going to get to spend more time with the children of the Nelsons and um, the father was a gamer and it's a common trope, as you said earlier, where like the gamer gets trapped in the game and a lot of people, myself included, like talk and fantasize about it with the buddies, but it's a completely different thing when your family comes to and it's actual life and death. Um, oh no, my baby girl. And the character development is just phenomenal as they grow and change, get tempted um, with power, with everything. Um, Though I guess this life one... is conflict or Aloria is conflict. Or I think it's both life yeah. or no. Yeah, I guess it said Aloria is conflict. This one also kind of has a weaker book, too. But it's only because of the, thing per with book the perspective switching. Um, it's still a phenomenal book, but it just it can be hard to track at times. It's um, yeah, yeah. I, I do have a grudge against book twos. Yeah, yeah. Middle child syndrome. Um, I'm with you though. The, it's usually the uh, it slows down a bit. We know how you like your combat and the pacing. And then after that, we have The Hunt, which is book one in the Lion's Lineage by Rohan uh, Send Help. No, uh, Hubelark. 
Hublark. Hublark. Sorry, I completely yeah. butchered that name. And Dakota Kraut. Um, picked it up because it's part of the Divine Dungeon universe, which Dakota Kraut's first series, The Divine Dungeon. Um, yeah, he's another... Oh, man, he's another author that has been pumping out content like mad. And his books are quicker, but he is amazing with his Easter eggs or causal connections. Um, Like any book, first book in a series, you can read it alone or start here. And that's perfectly fine. But Lion's Lineage means a lot if you're further or have read his other books in the series. Mm -hmm. Because throughout the Divine Dungeon series, there's a whole faction for um, the Lion Kingdom. And you get the Phoenix Kingdom. And so this is the lineage or the origin stories. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, November fourteenth. Uh, have you read it? Back over. I have been through it. It uh... did it live up to your expectations? Because the Divine Dungeon was one of our first uh, series um, leading into lit RPG, and <clears throat> the series has grown so much since then. Like this is like a book For in the twenties. It. Uh... It wasn't amazing, but it did develop on select aspects, and I enjoyed it for the additions to several questions that we had, and that's something that Dakota Kraut's very, very good at. Um, we didn't quite get the as much of the humorous aspect as I would expect from Dakota, uh, but he is writing with another author. Uh, yeah, like it's yeah, gonna gonna need more because like Arturian Archives, which is also based in the Divine Dungeon universe, it has a unique flavor with uh dennis vanderkirken and that has very much the the old man the wise old man vibe or the grandfatherly vibe and that Mm -hmm. one was unique that way for this one yeah i'm still reserving judgment it's book one um artorian you know like all book ones kind of have their thing as they figure out their rhythm um, I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't read it yet. Uh, but as you know, I really enjoy the world building aspects of it. And in a way, I can appreciate how the Divine Dungeon series has done it, where we don't have the opportunity to necessarily stop and smell the roses and get that level of detail. Um, but as you go and you expand into these other side series, it all interties together, right? Yeah, it Um, definitely... Seeing the strings connect. Um, I think some of our friends have complete spreadsheets, right? Like piecing it all together. Yeah. A lot of fun. We need to start doing some series streams too after we get caught up, break out the the whiteboards and connect all the, the dots and the strings and all that fun stuff. Uh, But yeah, it's been a lot of fun geeking out with you guys. Please keep sending us your uh, book suggestions. Um, Links to the Discord below, probably the best way to get a hold of us. And um, yeah, did I miss anything, Pete? Uh, Torden said... The Hunt, I've read. Looking forward to that episode. Why? Thank you. And I assume you've read every other book possibly <laughs> released by Dakota Kraut. Um, but if not, that's okay, too. And, uh, yeah, I, it's, yeah, we, we're trying not to do only Dakota Kraut at the moment. There's just so many good books. And yeah, once but... a week, it's hard to get through them all. 
Yep. Thank you again for hanging out with us, for checking out on the replay. If you made it this far, congratulations. Achievement unlocked. No, I don't have a button for it yet. And uh hope to geek out with you here soon. Bye. Bye.